Last show of 2011 for Mansfield's Money Sense, and we're looking at personal finance. Stephen Nathan, our guest in the studio once again, he's the CEO of 10X Investments. Stephen, let's uh, let's try and do a bit of crystal ball here. Um, next year, what what, what are your, what's your gut feel? Well, I think we we still going to have the volatility. The big the big global issue is uh, is Europe, the sovereign debt crisis. And it doesn't look like it's going to be resolved in the short term because even if the, the 17 countries can decide what to do, and that's a big if, still to implement that and the, the legal uh, issues and the changes that are required. So I think that's, that's a big overhang. So we're still going to have that level of uncertainty. Well, I think part of the problem there has been that they, they haven't actually implemented anything. You know, they, they've realized they've got a problem, but they, they haven't implemented well, it's very difficult because although the European Union is one, you have 17 member states that have each their own political issues mm. uh, and different. So, so the problems are different. So they can all go to Brussels and you know, make a decision, but it has to be uh, approved at home. And then politics gets in the way and many other issues get in the way. So the resolve you had in Brussels isn't as strong when you're sitting in you know, Paris and you have an election coming up. So, so it's just difficult to, to solve that. How does that impact on us? Because they, they, they're, a, they're a huge trading partner of ours, aren't they? They are. Uh, however, a lot of the issue here is really around the financial market sentiment. And it's, it's ironic because the more trouble Europe gets in, the worse we are because uh, risk, the, the perception of risk in emerging market increases, which is ironic because it's not emerging markets that have caused the problem, it's yeah. developed markets. But you have what they call this flight to safety. So people say, well, I'm just, I'm just risk averse. Therefore, I'm pulling my money out of emerging markets. So you tend to see uh, currencies like the RAND and uh, Brazil, et cetera, uh, weaken a lot. Capital flows out of our markets. So bond yields rise and the equity markets fall as investors flow out. Obviously, from an economic perspective, as you say, the terms of trade, uh, if there's uh, less economic activity in Europe, and globally, then the, the resource companies would also come under pressure. And you would expect, if lower economic growth, that resource prices would fall. And obviously, the Anglo-Americans and the Billitons, uh, those companies would uh, also have lower earnings. Do you think there is going to be, if, if this sort of trend continues for a, a fairly lengthy period, which could be 18 months, um, do you think there's going to be a, a move back into gold and the dollar and those perceived safe assets? It's difficult to say. Personally, I'm not a big believer in gold because I look at an asset as the present value of the future cash flows you get out of it. In gold, you don't get anything. There's no yield. In fact, it actually costs you money to have gold, to, to, to store gold. So it's a perception of value, and it has done well over the last uh, couple of years in the financial crisis. But personally, I wouldn't have a large exposure to gold in the long run. But, now, but hang on, having said that, we'll come back to what, the point you're trying to make, but having said that, I read somewhere that uh, uh, just a few weeks back that uh, if you have vaults in places like Singapore, which are um, capable of holding gold, you can earn a huge amount of money because you can charge as, as much as 1% of the value of the gold that people are storing there because they've simply run out of, of safe voltage space all over the world. So there, there are a lot of people who are not agreeing with you. They're saying, no, 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 I'm putting gold into a vault. Yes, but uh, whether those people are right or wrong, the point being is that uh, the value of an asset, a financial asset, is the current value of the cash flows you expect to get out of it. So property, I rent a property, I expect to get an income a rental and I can discount that back. When you look at uh, non-financial assets, then there's no way to value them. So you can look at a painting. I mean, a painting isn't the present value of income because you don't get an income. Now, gold fits into that. It's, not a, it's, a, it's a perceived store of value, but it's not the, the intrinsic value of gold is not uh, you know, the $1,700, $1,800, whatever it might be. And it costs you, as you say. It costs you, and it's costing more and more because it's quite expensive to, to, to store that. Mm. The fact that everyone's buying an asset is, is usually a reason not to buy that asset. You know, what, there's a saying in Wall Street, what the smart do in the beginning, the fools do in the end. So if you bought gold you know, when it was still well below $1,000, you did very well. To buy it at uh, $1,700, $1,800, 
I personally don't think it's going to be a good investment over the long run. It might do well, as you say, if there's a financial more problems and people perceive that as a safe haven together with a dollar, but you don't make money. You're not going to make money there in the long run. If you put money in the dollar, you preserve your capital in dollars, but you get no yield. Your mm. rate of return is about 1% if you are lucky. Okay, so what, what, will you, what will you be doing next year? Well, I'll be doing the same as I did this year, is, is, is investing our client money appropriate for when they need it. So investors with 10 years and longer should still have a high exposure to equity markets, well diversified between local and, uh, and, and, and international. When you say well diversified, what sort of percentages are you talking there? Can you give us any numbers? So, so, so we have about 70% sitting in equity, about 50% in uh, South Africa, and about 20% approximately uh, offshore, and then well diversified, as in, you know, don't have one or two, three stocks that are 10, 20, 30% of your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Try and get it well spread so that you earn the average returns. You don't get the high flyers, but you're also not overly exposed to the, to the disasters. The, the, the sort of general funds, your Satrix 40s and your Satrix Divis and those sort of things, um, how, how are those performing and, and how do you see them performing going forward? Well, typically an index fund like a Satrix fund will perform in line with the index. So if the all share index is up 6% and you have an index tracking fund that tracks that, you should be up 6% less their fee and hopefully their fees are quite low because that's why you want to buy an index fund is to get the market return at, uh, at, a, at, a, at a low cost. Unfortunately, also within the Satrix and the, the ETF space, there's now become lots and lots of choices. So they mm. actually perform quite differently because the, the Divi is a high dividend yield fund that does perform differently to the all share. So once you get into that realm of you know, which uh, fund should I buy away from the index, then it's, it's, it's a very difficult decision for us to make because they all perform well at different, at different times. But that, b because that's your, that's your speciality, isn't it? Is, is, the, is tracking the indexes. Or yeah, that's exactly right. So, so, so what we say is that the most important point is to get your asset allocation or the risk right in your portfolio. So get that risk, that asset allocation right, because that's going to determine most of your return. The actual stock picking, the stock selection of, you know, do I buy ShopRite over Woolies, et cetera, et cetera, that, that doesn't create value. In aggregate, that's a zero-sum game. So trying to beat the market in, for investors, it's, it's a zero-sum game. The excess return above the market is zero. So you can transfer, all the fund managers are doing is transferring that portion of the return between all the investors and every time you transfer there are a lot of fees. So the investors as a group do worse than the market and they do worse by the amount of fees that they are charged. So we say 10x, get the market return, risk appropriate for you, at the lowest cost, cost possible so you don't pay away 20, 30, 40, 50% of your real return over time. Okay, now let's get back to next year because we, geez, we start tracking all over the place. Here. That's, why, that's why I love having conversations with this guy because you never know where it's going to go. It's great fun. Um, next year, uh, we, we said, I meant, I asked you earlier, are, are there any trends or anything that are coming through? Is, obviously, they're not. Well, it's, it's, it's difficult to say. I mean, if we look at what happened this year is that uh, the financial, the European financial crisis came to the fore. So that created a lot of uncertainty. Also, we've got in the US, uh, there, there's a budget deadlock in terms of their debt ceiling and the politicians can't agree there. So that's also a big overhang. And this uncertainty means that investors are risk averse. So what happened in South Africa is that uh, we saw a lot of volatility in the markets. We actually are about 6% higher, so you've still got some return there, but the currency weakened a lot. So I think the story for South Africa for 2011 is that the currency depreciated by about 20%, and that's a big deal. So if you're a South African investor, you wanted to have you know, a reasonable portion of your assets offshore, the maximum you can have in a pension fund is up to 25%. But you wanted that diversification so that you at least when you convert back to RANDs, you, may, you made some return over there. So I guess the issue for 2012 will be, it's about the currency and it's about, is there still going to be high risk aversion? Because we believe that uh, when Europe does get sorted out, uh, then risk will, the risk appetite will actually increase. Because if you're sitting in dollars earning 1%, and sitting in gold earning nothing, uh, you can't get a return. You can't meet liabilities that way. You don't create wealth. Once you pay fees, you're in negative territory. So investors will have to look to take some risk 
They'll have to go for higher yields, higher returns, and they'll look to emerging markets where there are better growth prospects because of lower, lower debt. Um, whether that happens in 2012, nobody we don't know. knows. But you reckon there's still going to be this volatility as, lo as long as those other f those two factors, Europe and America, stay where they are. There's still going to be this volatility and uh, the risk aversion in place. Without a doubt. And I advise people watch the financial programs every day, but don't get too absorbed in them because you know your heart goes up and down. And after six months, you actually haven't moved anywhere, but you feel like you've you know, run, run a marathon. marathon and taken exactly. a massive loss, and you haven't. Yeah. You actually haven't.